All right. How is everybody doing this evening? Good to see you there. What's up? Let me pull that off. All right. How are you today? So tonight we're going to be cooking some chicken marsala. Been trying to get set up here. All right. So I've got our recipe located on our Facebook page. You can check that out for a list of our ingredients tonight. Um, for starters, we're also going to do a mashed potatoes, uh, Romano mashed potatoes. Uh, we're going to do a little science behind some mashed potatoes too, learn a little bit about them. Um, so for starters, we're going to get that started first because the mashed potatoes will take the longest. So everything working on there? All right. Sorry, I'm still getting everything, all the kinks worked out. All right. So for starters, we're going to go with the we're, we're going to get the potatoes boiling. That's going to take the longest. We'll get those in water, and then that way, while we work on everything else, we'll be good. While we do do this, I learned of a trick recently. So we're going to try something tonight as well while we put all this together. Um, I don't usually peel my potatoes. I get um. I usually get red potatoes, um, they're the best for uh, oven roasted potatoes. Um, russets are really good for mashed potatoes for soaking up um, flavor and whatnot, but I just really like little red potatoes. We're just going to do a little handful here too. Um, so normally I don't peel them because they're red potatoes, but I learned a trick that if you take all your peeled skins and we'll douse them with just a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper and bake them off in the oven and it'll be like a potato chip really a friend of mine was just explaining that to me and it sounded really fantastic all right we got potatoes everywhere let's be a little more clean about this all right so i'd like to start off each stream we're gonna with uh, kind of how we have been in the past um what have you guys had for dinner today i know on the east coast it's about nine o'clock so some of you probably already had dinner for the evening um more on the west coast maybe you're just now having dinner while you watch or just had it or something or maybe you had something great over the weekend it was playoff football uh, we posted a couple pictures on our Facebook page we had a uh, some uh, wings and macaroni and cheese with homemade Mac it came out just delicious sorry here this is gonna take a couple minutes maybe we'll not peel all of them since this is just a little test Why you lean cuisine pasta? All right. How is lean cuisine? Is it actually pretty good? And a protein bar. Tosh, you had a or Tash, you had a cold pizza. Huh? You know, I'm um, I'm always a fan of cold pizza. Um, I know there's a lot of health food regulations in kitchens, but um, there's totally nothing wrong with ordering delivery and letting it sit on your coffee table overnight and having a fresh slice for breakfast in the morning with the leftover can of coca-cola you left sitting there it's all flat and nasty but hey it's a it's college life right <laughs> a protein bar hummus and pita bread and a finest bottle of gourmet water <laughs> it wasn't a bad thing <laughs> finest bottle of gourmet water is that what fiji so since these are boiled potatoes we're going to kind of chop them up uniformed it allows them to cook more evenly um, when you cook just the whole potato, they're different sizes. They can cook differently. One will be done and dissolving and turning to hell, while the other one is not even cooked yet. So we try to get them mostly the same size since we're making mashed potatoes. doesn't matter if they're a little bit too small, although you don't want them too small, I guess, because they could get super mashed. But we're going to cook them just right, and it'll be okay, right, is the plan. Since these are small, we're just going to kind of X them. These ones I didn't peel because, well, I don't like peeling potatoes, but I'm going to try this chip idea. Maybe after this idea tonight, maybe we'll peel every potato, and we'll always have that as a fun side dish. Ice Mountain. What is Ice Mountain? Oh, gourmet water Ice Mountain, duh. <laughs> The thing with uh, water is they don't legally, they can say it's, um, they can call the bottle of water Mountain Spring Fresh Water, 
and it doesn't legally have to be from a mountain spring unless it says on the bottle actually made with fresh mountain spring they can just you you can sit there in your living room or in your kitchen we can sit right here and fill up bottles of water call it montana mountain fresh and sell it all day long all right so we got them all chopped up we got our pot here let's get our camera a little better we can switch that move cutting board cam down a bit cool oh move the cam down a bit you want it closer um, why you is that what you're saying like drop it down if that's the case I can't do that tonight I'll have to work on my rigging maybe cut it maybe cut some of the boards down a little bit I'm still working on the rigging so what I, I can't uh, sorry I meant to do that um, if that's what you meant bring the cam down a little water cooler water so if you meant like that, okay, we can do that with the cam. If you meant actually lower it down, I would have to wait till next stream and actually do some more construction on my A-frame contraption here that holds everything together. So we got the potatoes in the pot. We're going to, not down, just angled down in a 2D way. Uh, Tash explained it better. Like, like that? Like that kind of down? But if you mean like... If you mean like instead of being right here, you want the camera like, if you want like that kind of a close, um, yeah, I'd have to work on rigging. So we got the potatoes in the pot. Uh, we're going to fill it up with water here. Um, usually just want to fill just a little bit above the amount of potatoes you have in the pot. You don't just want to like go overload on the water in your pot. You can end up with over boil. And one thing to help prevent that. I better switch back to our double cam because we're going to kind of go back and forth. Yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah. So we'll kind of we'll kind of go back and forth. So I'll leave this up for a moment or maybe I got to get a camera, guys, what I got. <laughs> so um, so when you're doing potatoes, you want to use cold water. Cold water with potatoes, um, as opposed to putting wa uh, potatoes in boiling water. If you put the potatoes in straight boiling water, you'll end up over overcooking the outside of the potato while the inside of the potato is still raw, and it'll end up mushing and turning really bad on the outside, and you won't get as good of a quality product. So, for this case, um, so yeah, you always want to use the cold water. Also, you want to add a little bit of salt. A couple of things with um, with salting our potatoes and making these mashed potatoes is you gotta worry about boiling points. Um, adding salt to water allows the water to boil at a higher temperature by about four degrees usually. Um, but the four degrees can make a difference based on elevation. I live here in Montana where we're at 4,800 feet. So at 4,800 feet, um, every thousand feet the temperatures go down so instead of water boiling at 212 degrees here in Bozeman Montana it boils more at like a uh, what 202 degrees 203 degrees so we lose almost 10 degrees so adding salt helps bring that up a couple of more so we're at 202 203 you know that'll get us back to 207 so it'll just help it cook a little faster if you're out back country and stuff that becomes really important um, you end up boiling off a lot more water so you use more water consumption um, it takes longer to cook your food. You know, it uses more propane or gas or whatever you're using to cook your food in the backcountry or something like that. Salt. <laughs> My little salt thing ain't working on. Um, so, yeah, there's depending on how actually high of elevation you're going, the measurement of the boiling of the water and things like that can make a difference, especially in baking when you're worried about, like, how much um, uh, different liquids are baking out of your product. So, potatoes are on, good to go. We don't have to worry about them. They're just going to sit there and boil. Next thing is our, we're going to chop up some vegetables here. Um, we got mushrooms, mushrooms. Switch our camera. Prep cam, all right. So, we're going to go over chopping up mushrooms here. You can buy the pre-sliced ones, which is great if you don't like chopping. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes they're slightly more expensive because you pay them to do it for you. But that's cool. But today, we got fresh ones. 
whole ones. And we're gonna chop them up for you. So to start, I'm gonna move my stuff around because I'm still a mess over here. For start, so for the the celery and the onions. Um, I demonstrated with the tip down and doing a forward slicing motion with your vegetables, right? With the mushrooms, on the other hand, you, you can still do that. You can keep the tip down and keep a forward slicing motion. You know, go part way through or flip it over on its side. That way it's flat and do the other way. That's a totally incomplete safe way to do. Tip down, slice that top. Now you got a flat surface. And then you can just keep your tip down and keep your knuckles curled in so you don't slice them. Um, but if you've been in the kitchen... For many years and you have good chopping skills a little example we can show you of um let's see if we don't go all over the place here because my cutting board is not the biggest in the world so the other way to do them is to do chopping up with your tip again keeping your knuckles curled in so the tip of your knife just bounces off and doesn't actually cut anything and you can get a couple of slices and just kind of go across so when you're chopping a lot of mushrooms at one time and you get your chopping method down you can really get going on them and so like in big kitchens when you have like whole cases of these you have to do and a big gnarly cutting board to do it on you sit there for an hour just chopping these things you, you start to get a little skill it helps with your knife and your knife and knife control but see yeah, one of the things I'm doing is cutting off the first couple there to at least halfway getting it flat flattening it down and then getting the rest of it. Some people aren't very comfortable holding the round. Like I said, I've done this forever. So if you just cut the very tip off and you can flatten it down and do the same thing that way. Again, when you're used to doing case after case after case, um, just tip down and zipping through it. Last couple here. Ooh, that's a dirty one. All right, mushrooms chopped, show off. <laughs> yeah, and 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 that's looking through my camera setup and everything else. So I mean, if we had a big cutting board and a whole pile and more level, you can really get them going. Um, so let me grab. I think I got paper towels over here. Maybe. Ah, paper towels. <laughs> so we're gonna get our pan heated up. Because the first thing we're going to do is saute our garlic and our mushrooms together. We're going to use olive oil and saute them and get them warm before we do the chicken. Uh, you want to get a nice saute on your vegetables. Since we're going to do it all in the same pan, you want all the flavor and everything to kind of stay in the pan and work itself together. So part of, um, part of that here is... Well, we're going to do the vegetables first. If you do the meats with it, it kind of all mixes. Just It, it doesn't cook right. Everything fights for pan space, and it's just not as much fun. I meant to have everything out and ready, and apparently I didn't have my olive oil ready. There we are. All right. I'm getting a little more organized at this. This is our third week at this now. For the people who have stayed with us and have been around i really appreciate it thanks for stopping by if you haven't yet go ahead and hit the follow button or if you haven't seen us on facebook check us out on facebook uh i got a youtube channel for our past videos sorry as i pour some coffee while we wait for it to heat up so while we have the olive oil out we'll get our oven turned on here oh wait you know what i wonder Haha, <laughs> instead of turning the oven on, since we have just a little bit, I have a little mini toaster. And I don't use it very often, so we're going to use our little mini toaster here. Move our big plant out of the way. You know the mini toaster, the thing that has that nice little hot rod at the bottom that catches all the grease that's um, questionably a fire hazard every time you go and use it. Always keeps you on edge, keeps you on your toes, especially when you try and make breakfast stuff in the morning. You're like, is it going to burn and light a fire and burn the house down today, or am I going to get a bagel? I don't know. It's hard to tell. We'll cross our fingers. Um, I think our pan's starting to warm up. I'm going to throw a little drop of olive oil in here. Oh, I don't have the right camera on. You can yell at me and say, hey, you dummy, wrong camera. 
I forgot to hit the record button again. So we're back with the record. Um, all right. Pan's getting hot. Let's switch the camera over. The mushrooms we can put back in the container that we got them out of, since we have them all diced up. The container makes a nice holding tray for them. All right, and we'll bring them on over. I also have some minced garlic. When using olive oil, anytime you use olive oil, you always want to use some minced garlic um, because, well, it's awesome. Well, today we have chopped garlic. Minced garlic, chopped garlic. As far as I'm concerned, it really doesn't matter. There's so many types. There's just all on the shelf. I just look for the one that says garlic. Test if you're warm. You throw a couple in here for sizzle or not. Hey, something happened. Tash donated five dollars. Hey, right on, man. Thanks a lot. That is fantastic of you. Thank you. I am so honored. All right, so we're. I'm working on. I'm working on getting a thing for um, how people donate. Um, I'm working on figuring out for like a dollar, five dollar, ten dollar kind of thing of like prizes and rewards and things of that nature. Um, one thing I think I'm going to adopt doing is um, uh, we uh, might do like pizza giveaways one of these days. Um, another thing. I was planning on maybe having a list of recipes and seeing how like people can vote or figure out what you want. So for right now, since we're just getting started, as far as people donating, uh, I appreciate every bit. So I mean, if there's something you want to see for next Monday or something you really like, um, Tash, why or any, um, go, go ahead and uh, say, hey, I want to see this or something. I, I'd be happy to cook it for you. I'm always looking for ideas. So right now, anybody who donates, I'm pretty much going to run with the idea that they would like if I can do it and it's plausible. Of course I can do it, it's just if we can get it all together, you know. Such as today we had a hard time, so we're doing chicken marsala today, and the problem we had was today's Martin Luther King Day, which is fantastic, but that means that liquor stores are closed, and marsala wine you have to buy in a liquor store because the alcohol percentage is so high that you can't buy it in a beer and wine store. So, because you can't buy in a beer and wine so store, knowing it's Marsala wine, um, you have to go to a liquor store, and they were all closed, so I had to, like, go around, and what I ended up finding was in a grocery store, they sell a Marsala cooking wine, which was really funny. Um, what's really funny is, um, lost my train of thought, sorry. But with, yeah, so the alcohol, the Marsala wine that I bought was a cooking Marsala wine. And instead of in the beer and wine section of the store, it was in the baking section next to a white wine and uh, something else, right? And on the bottle, and I can show you, it says the alcohol by volume is 14%. So I'm assuming there's 14% alcohol, right? So I asked the lady at the store, excuse me, I was like, do I need a... I said, do I, do I need a, the B21 to buy this? And she's like, no, it's cooking wine. So, I mean, I'm not condoning it, but, you know, if you're under 21 and looking for some wine for your date tonight, um, there's this wonderful cooking Marcelo wine. I wouldn't recommend it because Marcelo wine tastes like crap, and the only reason you ever do buy it is to make food with it. So I don't understand why anybody would ever um, want to drink it. Which is also why it angers me that it's in the liquor stores and not a beer and wine store because nobody goes to the liquor store and says like, oh man, give me give me a bottle of your finest Marsala. Like, that just doesn't happen. That's disgusting. Um, tasty cooking wine. Yum? Yeah. No, um, we'll, 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 let's see. So I quit drinking, but we can taste, like, just dab it on the scale of, It does taste like Marsala cook, uh, Marsala wine has a slight bit of a blander taste, but not quite as sharp, I guess. I'm not sure. Could be better, is what I'm trying to say. But I couldn't get actual Marsala wine from the liquor store because they were closed. So we got cooking Marsala wine. I've made this dish a million times with regular Marsala wine, so at the end of it, we'll see how it tastes. And I just forgot something else.
forgot my apron. It's not just for show. Apron, having an apron in, in the kitchen is just very nice to have because it's like having a rag on you at all time, you know? I always do like that little extra bit of sauce off or whatever. All right, mushrooms are cooking very nice over here. We're going to cook them down real nice and soft. Turn it down a little bit because we're going to go over to our chicken and I don't want to burn these. So we're going to turn it down just a little bit. It'll sit there. Should be okay. Or this container. You only say that because you don't know enough alcoholics. <laughs> that's what. That's what I do. Yeah. No. I, I'm. I'm sure there's alcoholics that would love to grab this bottle of Marsala and just drink it straight to their face. Uh, that's. Sorry, story. Because <laughs> that's gross. But teach their own. Whatever gets you by in the day. So we're gonna switch to our other. Well, we're gonna switch to our other camera, and we're gonna switch to our other cutting board. Again, I like to use my plastic ones for when I'm dealing with the raw chicken. Um, I just feel like it's safer and easier to clean with bleach and whatnot. I'm going to move our potato skins out of the way. Give our mushrooms another little stir. So I had talked about our, our cast iron skillets before. And I wanted to review with this skillet. I was looking at the bottom of it and it said made in France. And I looked up the company. This is a $200 cast iron skillet with enamel on it that we got a set of two with a lid for, uh, I had said in the stream I believe $10, but I uh, realized it was now um, $40 we had paid, but I looked up the two skillets, they're $300 worth of skillets that, again, yard sales guys, 40 bucks. Fantastic skillet by the way. So, working with raw chicken. When you work with raw chicken, it's like dealing with nuclear radiation waste. Um, Anything it gets on, it can risk getting salmonella and is never good. So to prevent damages, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks we have. For starters, let's get this out of here. For starters, you should be wearing gloves. I, again, didn't get gloves because I'm bad. Um, I just like to wear gloves for chicken because it's raw chicken. It gets out of your nails better. So here we have our fun chicken breast stuck together right in the center have our tendon and everything so I'll show you how to break this down a little bit we'll do it get into a little bit of minor butchery so for starters as you see I don't have my butcher knife but that's right it's just basic chicken here you have this main hardened vein right here down the center of the chicken and it's not doesn't taste good to eat you don't you never want to serve that for so for starters when you have a set of chicken breast whole like this you want to take your knife and get as close to the vein as you can to save as much chicken for yourself as you can, you know, because he need to cut off his waist. And just get one nice slice right down there. Now you've separated that breast. You still have it attached to the other one. Kind of goes up. And you'll get one more good, nice slice. My knife isn't the sharpest. Right. And that takes that off. What I do with this is I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. And I'm going to throw this on there because my dog has allergies and aller is allergic to a lot of foods. Chicken is not one of them. He can totally have chicken. So I always save the stuff like that for good old buddy. Another piece, as you see, you get this nice big fatty chunk right here. Um, again, it's just fat and tendon. It's nothing that you really want to save or eat. It's never good. So just kind of lay that out. Take your knife. Just kind of slice that off. Put that in your dog food pal. Another little piece of fat. You can leave that on if you want. Depending on uh, what kind of diet you're on, take all the fat off, trim it all. Really doesn't matter. Um, feel around your chicken. As I'm feeling right here, there's a little piece of cartilage. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. Um, but there's a little piece of cartilage that's right here. And um, so you always want to feel around your chicken because if you cook that and then you bite into that, it's just going to be chewy and gross. So Because that's right there, we're going we're gonna to slice that off. We'll make that for the buddy pal. All right, uh, Thomas donated three dollars. Right on, Thomas. Thanks a lot, buddy. I really appreciate it, dude. That is awesome. Fantastic. Um, yeah, we're keeping the dream alive. Um, so we got the dog food pal. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on something for all you beautiful, fantastic people that are donating out there. So. 
our chicken is nice and cleaned up. We've got a little more fat right here. I can leave it on. I personally do not like chicken fat or tendons. I don't like that chewiness, toughness when I eat it. Um, I never have, never will. So I just cut all of it off. Again, since it's, I'm not throwing it away, it's all for dog food. It's really not a waste because it's a little for the homie. So, I mean, you know, you don't feel like you're wasting it at that point. If you don't have a dog, go get a dog. If you live in a place where you can't have a dog, I'm sorry. Go move to a new place where you can't have a dog. <laughs> State sales, you can get some great stuff. Heck yeah, you can. Um, never used. Never used what? I'm on a delay, so when, so uh, sometimes out of context, I'm not quite sure what you what you mean. So we got our chicken breast down. We got a nice big fatty piece here, and what we're gonna do again what's called butterflying it. So as it was before with the piece connected in the middle it was like a set of butterfly wings that was basically the center body like a butterfly right so because it's such a big fat thick piece oh check my mushrooms we're good um so because it's su such a big fat thick beautiful piece uh we're gonna butterfly it down so it'll also help us cook it faster as well so i just lay my hand on top come right in at the side just get nice down just kind of butterfly it open find your crease add a little more of a slice Use your fingers even and kind of push it open. Now that one chicken breast is one nice, big, beautiful piece. See how much of that? You know, you basically just double the size of it. And if you're serving people, I mean, most people don't realize the thickness of stuff like that. So, I mean, you can cut it down like that, cut that in half, bread both pieces, and you literally have two servings. Do that again there. You have four servings of chicken. And then if you cut it again, you can make sandwiches, and you can technically get eight sandwiches out of these two chicken breasts. You know, I mean, there, there's a lot you can really do working with stuff like that. So, never use stuff at estate sales. Oh. Um, so we're going to butterfly the other one. Now that we got that out. I'm going to kind of slice down. Get another nice, beautiful open up there. All right. So, my little... My little donation, but I have a little bar up too that has a goal on there, but it's not showing. I'll have to fix that later. So we got two beautiful pieces of chicken. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be frying these in the pan and serving them. And you don't want to serve these whole big pieces, so we're going to cut these down into probably about, I'd say four pieces, maybe three or four pieces. So I like to leave this nice flush side down when I'm cutting them for stuff like this. It's just more, oh wait, before we do that. One more trick I want to show you. So, as you see, I'm touching the raw chicken with my left hand and not my right hand, only the top of the knife. That's so I can keep my right hand somewhat dry. But I'm going to wash my hands. And we're going to tenderize the chicken. And in beef terms, that means you're going to tenderize the beef. You're going to make it nice and a little easier to chew, stuff like that. In chicken terms, it does essentially do the same thing, but what tenderizing also means is flattening the ever-loving hell out of it so that it will cook quicker and easier, especially in commercial kitchens when time is of the essence. Um, so tenderizing chicken, yeah, is really more of a ploy, meaning just um, flattening the crap out of it. All right, so when you get your chicken laid out, why you donate another two dollars? Oh my God, man! Thank you so much. You guys are so awesome. Thank you. That's I, I just don't know what to say. You guys are too cool. Um, thank you. Um, so when you're doing your chicken, I take the saran wrap and you want to lay it over top of your chicken because what we're going to do is tenderize it. And when you tenderize it, you know, aka smacking and smashing the crap out of it with a hammer. Um, you don't want it to splatter all over you, all over your kitchen, all over your stuff, right? So if you just lay a couple of pieces of saran wrap over top, just kind of seal it down, that's going to contain all of your splatter, provided you just don't tear all the way through all your saran wrap too, and depending on the quality of your saran wrap. So, in that case, you see your hammer, you got a couple of different sides of it. You got a got a graded side, you got the flat side, you got another graded side. If you're doing beef and you have a big area, you want to use the tenderized side. Sorry I'm late. I fell asleep watching a movie. What's up, Joe's Life? Good to see you, man. How's it going? We're, we're just about to uh, tenderize our chicken because um, some people have dirty minds. We have to 
We have to be adult about how we explain how we're going to use a hammer on the chicken. <laughs> um, so, as I was demonstrating, you have the flat side of the hammer, and you have the graded side of the hammer. As I was like, <laughs> yes, why? Something to the effect. <laughs> so, you, you have the graded side and the flat side. The reason we're going to use the flat side here is for the chicken, is the graded side will uh, help poke holes through our saran wrap, and um, and the flat side won't. Also, you want uh, the, the, the graded side is more for like beef and stuff like that. You can really get the tenderizing effect. So, I'm just going to kind of hold that down, give it a few good smacks. You might want to. Should have probably warned you. You might want to turn your volume down just a little bit. Well, the last bit right there. Nice. All right. Seeing the hammer stays dry. Not saying it's clean, but peel your saran wrap right off. Beating the choking. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now they're nice and smashed out. They're nice and flat. They're gonna cook really fast now. I'm gonna set that one onto the side and cut this one up. Cut nice eatable size pieces. So edible, whatever. There's a nice, you know, palm size, you know, maybe your finger size. If you're looking for an estimation of how big, I also have pretty big hands. So I mean, but, you know, just saw what the size of the breast was. And so it looks like we got about four pieces out of this breast. i just kind of stack them all around right top of it. Keep them all about the same size. They'll all fit in the pan a little easier. They'll, again, cook at the same time. As you saw, we took the breast, we cut it in half, basically made two breasts. Cut those breasts in half. Eight pieces. Eight wonderful, delicious pieces. I'm going to have to turn our mushrooms down here a little bit because there's one more key thing we're going to have to do to this. Our, uh, our potatoes are heating up very nicely there. So now I'm going to get into some flour. When we do this, we're going to want to do it in flour, and I didn't get all this together as um, well as I should have. So... When you pan fry this up, flour is important. Along with the flour, we're going to season it. Since you, anytime you use flour in cooking, again, uh, I'm not a baker. I'm a terrible baker. I don't like baking, so rules might be different for baking. They're always different for baking. In the kitchen, when you're using flour for cooking, um, you almost always want to season it. If you were here for our chicken noodle soup, um, stream or if you check out our YouTube channel, The Dude's Foods, and watch our chicken noodle soup video. We use flour and um, for the noodles and seasoning is a big part of it as it will be again right here. Um, let's see. We got raw chicken everywhere so let's do a good job cleaning this up. So we'll move the dog food. I'm actually just going to set it kind of on the sink because that's okay because it's just dog food and we'll cook it later. I'm going to move our cutting board with our chicken over to... Let's switch up our camera angle. How about that? I'm going to move our chicken over to here. I'm going to set it in the back for right now. Our mushrooms. Hmm. Hear that sizzle? It's a good sizzle. It's a good sound. It's so good. Um... Sponge and clean. So, got the sponge here, a little bit of soap. Anytime when dealing with chicken, I always put a little splash of bleach on my um, on my sponge because even, I, I, I trust very much in Don. Nothing against Don. I just like to know that everything in the surrounding area is dead. Since we're done with our hammer, we're gonna put that in the sink. All right, mm, smell that bleach. Got our knife. I'm going to set that in the sink for one sec. I don't think we have any more cutting to actually do, to be honest. Um, Alright. Beautiful. Just 
Just a little bit of cleanup while we're doing this is all. Okay. Sanitized, cleaned. Got a paper towel. Wipe up one last bit. Now we can make our flour mix. Let's see how we do this here. Um, oh, perfect. So, got a perfect little red mixing bowl for this. Grab some flour. So as you saw in the stream before, I always take my bags of flour and dump it into an old oatmeal container. Um, I think that's just kind of something that we all kind of learned how to do growing up with our mom, and so um, the, the, you just always kind of did. And I think I think moms probably got it from their grandmas or, or my grandma, or their moms. It's just you know, grandparents back in the day in the 20s, you had to conserve stuff, save everything for everything, right? All right, so we're gonna dump a little bit. Switch your camera back up. All right, I'm gonna dump a little bit into our bowl here. Maybe more than a little bit, maybe about half a bowl full, because we're gonna coat all of our pieces of chicken with this. We're not gonna use an egg wash um, when you're like frying, beer battering stuff, um, like fish, uh, like fried zucchini, stuff like that. You want to use an egg wash. Uh, you, you basically what that is is you put your chicken in the flour, put it back in the egg, put it in your breading or um, whatever other flour seasoning mix you have. In this case, we're not going to do that because we're just pan frying it and we just want the flour for a little bit of seasoning and just a light coating on the chicken. So, um, oh. so let's find, where's all our seasonings here? little bit of salt I know get your salt shakers out you love it garlic powder black powder or black powder black pepper whoa let's let's not blow the kitchen up now you know, a little black powder in the food that'd be fun huh <laughs> call this that extra spicy mix um I don't know where my red pepper flakes are that's all right I used them at some point when I was making chicken wings for the barbecue yesterday, and I'm a bad boy and don't put them away like I'm supposed to. So, that's okay. So we're going to... shit's banging. Mm -hmm. so we're going to throw some salt. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Throw a good amount of garlic powder. Get that flavor in there. Nice amount of black pepper. I like black pepper. And that's about all we're going to do for that, really. Um, let's spend one second to see if I can make this work real quick. Nope, still don't want to work. Okay. All right, so switching cameras to there. We're going to heat our mushrooms back up. Actually, while our mushrooms are cooked, let's switch cameras again. I know. Eventually, I'm going to get either a guy to do this for me, or I'm going to get a little button thing and kind of carry it with me and be able to just insta-flip. As we grow the channel and get better, we will make this work. So... For conserving room in our pan, I'm going to dump all this into another bowl, put it onto the side just for the time being. All this is going to come right back, but we want to save the pan because all that goodness is just in there. And guys, I'm not the biggest fan of mushrooms to be honest with you, but I tell you what, this smells really good. Maybe it's just the olive oil and the garlic. Nah, it just smells really good because it's good. Oh, also we're going to want butter for this. So we do have olive oil, but something I do like to fry the chicken in too with a little bit is butter. Butter is always fun to use. Um, olive oil is healthy. Butter is tasty too. And for because we're also going to basically convert this into a gravy. So 
using butter is also helpful um, for the gravy aspect, the creamy, if you will. I get a nice little butter down. Let's move some of this stuff out of our way because we're going to get messy. So that's warming. Move our garlic out of the way. We don't need that right now. Mashed potatoes are boiling nice. Marsala's on deck, ready to go. Butter to the side. Right, flour here, cool. We can see all that on the screen. Cool, excellent. Chicken is right here. Stacked it in the back there. Sorry I can't get that on camera. Um, Anyway, one of these days we'll figure something out. I tried to lower the camera down below to get them, but in order to get under the hood, the camera's just way too close. And I don't know how to adjust the camera stuff for stuff like that. So we're going to pull out our handy tongs for this. we got our flour mixed up here. Got our pans getting warm. Probably need to be a little bit warmer. So maybe you, some of you came in a little later. I, I, know, I know some of you actually commented that you did. So to those that may have been a little later, uh, I like to start off each stream, and we like to talk about, keep chat flowing, is um, what did you have for dinner? Um, be it, did you have it tonight? Did you have it last night? Did you have anything fancy for uh, playoff games? Are you a football fan? Did you play any, uh, cook anything good for football? What'd you have? We always like to talk about food. See what was good. Uh, why you had uh, some lean cuisine lasagna, and Tash had mentioned something about some cold pizza. Thomas, you're out there. You always make something good. Thomas, with you had uh, you had Rasta chicken uh, last week, right? Or um, always fun exotic. Do you have anything uh, fun this weekend? Maybe you and your girl go out and get something good. Or all right. So while this is heat. This is look, looking good. As you can see, the bubbles are coming up, getting a little boil. We're gonna grab our uh, grab our chicken, flip a little both sides into the flour here, just a little bit, shake some of the excess off, and lay it down in our pan. We're just gonna do that with each piece until we fill up our pan. Ooh, got a little too much on the top of there. Might need a little more oil. This in a commercial kitchen, you have big flames, you have big stoves, it's a lot hotter, you're doing it on the fly. I'm kind of doing this at a little slower pace to show you guys, so pan's not right at the temp that it probably should be. When you're using flour like this, you want to hit it on the pan like searing hot. You just want this thing to be like, pshh, you know, just banging. Um, but that's okay. Do you like those sound effects? Those are fun, huh? Um, there we go. There's a little bit. Throw a little bit more oil in there because the the flour soaks up every bit of liquid that's in there. So you. Didn't... All right. So what did y'all have for food? So. Joe's life has some stir fry with eggs. You need eggs in it. Thomas had Chinese yesterday. Empire Palace. And yummy Chinese. Yeah, I totally remember that place. I love that place. You. Um, <coughs> excuse me. There's that place back in Pittsburgh called Empire Palace, and you could uh, you could order uh, chicken fried rice. I don't know if they still do it. Uh, maybe Thomas can shed some light on it. But you used to be able to get like Chinese style. You know, you order the fried rice, and they just send you this big gnarly bowl that like takes up half the table, and they just hand you a whole pile of plates, and everybody just like digs in on chicken fried rice. It's amazing. I miss that place. Oh, here we have a really good Chinese place. It's um, it's at the mall. Uh, believe it or not, he's uh, from Can he speaks Cantonese or something like that. And um, I've traveled across the country a lot, been to a lot of places. One thing I've always found, if you're looking for good Chinese food and you can't find it, go to the mall. Nine times out of ten, in the food court at the mall, the Chinese dude, he didn't have much money. He got a good deal to open up a little spot in the mall. Um, usually it's dirt cheap, 
like eight, nine, ten bucks, you can get like three entrees and fried rice or noodle. Like all of them are the same. It's like they all talk to each other and serve it up the same way. It's great. Um, one of my personal favorites. So our chicken's getting a nice sizzle here. Looking pretty good. Crank the heat up a little more. We're going to store our potatoes just a tad bit. Joe's life. We had a Sunday fun day at work, which just means our gym. So we went in an electric stove shop. Make 12 eggs, two boxes of sausage links, and a box of hash browns. We made them breakfast. <laughs> that sounds awesome. And Thomas, Chinese Empire Palace is still the same. Had chi uh, General Tso's and crab. Yeah, that's so awesome. They haven't changed. They were so good. I love that place. I think a group of us ate there after sometime after we graduated too. It was like a place to go eat afterwards. Yeah, we're all going to Empire Palace, man. All right, so we got a little more room there. As chicken cooks, it kind of shrinks a little bit. Um, kind of gave us a little more space to put the last of our chicken in here. That's good because I'd like to just cook it all off at once instead of kind of farting around with it with these two extra little pieces. Oh, shook off a little extra. Flour, that's okay. We pull our cutting board out of there. Woo. Alright, a little better here. Uh oh. Excuse me. A little sneeze there. That's so awesome, f Sunday fun day, when, uh, when your boss is out, and you just sit there and totally just cook up at work, or kind of make whatever you want. Uh, working in kitchens is fun too. Karim, 14, 14, 14, what is up? Um, good to see you. How's it going? If you just joined us here in chat, we're talking about what we had for dinner tonight, or last night. So, if you want to share a story of maybe something that you had for food over the weekend during the playoff games or just in general we just enjoy talking about food and, and playing with food so as you see this again this wasn't super hot like it probably should have been um so if you're doing this at home maybe have it a little hotter but part of keeping it this cool too um you don't risk burning as much you can kind of keep a better eye on it you know if you have it super hot and if you're if your flat top or if your stove isn't all up to par, maybe you end up burning one half the pan, the other half the pan's barely cooked. So, you know, going and taking it at a slower pace ain't bad. Where are you, U-Haul? So cooking is out of the norm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool going to run a truck. Smells like bacon and eggs. Like, mmm. Take a side dish of that with my truck if you don't mind. Does an egg burrito come with every rental? <laughs> new policy for an extra five dollars your u-haul comes with a bean burrito or egg burrito all right so our chicken's got a nice little brown to it so what we're going to do now is add our marsala this is our favorite part now if you have the good marsala from the liquor store and you have a flame stove careful with this part you can't ignite a fire like we did last week um, with the banana foster lighting the liquor on fire. If you're prepared for it and know what you're doing and enjoy doing that, by all means, go for it. Um, but otherwise, um, be careful at this point if you're using the store stuff. Karen, you had some homemade pizza. Homemade pizza, that's awesome. Tash had some cold pizza. Um, homemade is awesome. We're going to pour this around and really measure it. The top part of the bottle, just kind of go around it a little bit. Just kind of get a good layer in there. Helps pull everything off the bottom of the stove. Lift all your chicken up. Move it around too. Let it help get underneath and sizzle that stuff out of there. Use the liquid to boil off all the stuff in the pan. The pan's the thing's not flat. I still got to get a better piece underneath there so I have it flat. But as you can see, it's kind of cooking it all off. I'm cooking everything through. 
chicken sitting in there. Mm, that Marcella comes up. At this point, we can add our mushrooms back. Now we're cooking this chick. Or, ah, uh, <laughs> cooking is chick. Yeah, our chicken is cooked. Focus, we got this. <laughs> Mine probably wasn't as good as yours. Tash's probably wasn't as good as Karim's. Um, yeah, cold pizza, Karim's homemade pizza. I'm going to bet the homemade pizza was better. So, Karim, was the homemade, pi homemade pizza from you? Or did you have a friend or family make it? Or... What kind of toppings do you use? Pepperoni? Do you like meats? Do you like vegetables? Are you a vegetarian? Are you a meat eater? We enjoy all kinds. We just enjoy people who like food. I don't care if you're a vegetarian, if you're vegan. Everybody has their own rights and ways. We support it all. That's why we try to make everything we can. As you see, the um, Marsala has cooked out pretty well. It's kind of creaming up a little bit. There, uh, a little there. We've got some chicken broth. I'm going to open up this can here. Get some chicken broth in there. A little more liquid, a little more flavor. Because, again, basically we're making a gravy here, folks. Um, you have your chicken in your pan. You have your mushrooms in your pan. You have your marsala. A little bit of chicken. Let's see. I haven't tasted this one. Hmm. It's not very salty. So, use a nice little bit of it. Kind of fill it in there. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to let all this kind of cook. And let our cooking, uh, let our, ch why can't I say that right? Chicken cook. Man, guys, we're going to let our chicken cook in these juices. And yeah, I really wish it was a little, I could get that flattened out better. But actually, you know what? We can. Even though it's a smaller burner, the concept at this point is the same. So our potatoes can move over. This is flatter. So because it's flatter, we can keep everything a little more even. Instead of having to like stack it all up into the one side that the juice flows. I'm going to get a better pan for that. Uh, I saw it at Ace. Uh, they have them at Ace. I went to Ace today. I completely spaced out on getting one. I'm sorry. I will get one. A little more chicken stock. We used probably about a half a can. And that is just going to cook like that. We're going to add a little more butter. Give you an idea how much butter. Um... I don't want to use that knife as such near to the raw chicken. Although this is near raw chicken and this is our last of the butter, so why not this one? So you saw the chunk, probably cut about half. Throw a nice throw both of them really. There's a lot there. So you throw those two big chunks of butter in there. That helps make that gravy cream out a little bit. Um I know we try to start healthy with the olive oil and the garlic and the chicken. You're like, man, he's gonna be healthy, and then then we switch right over to just putting a pile of butter in there. Cause I mean, everything's better with butter. So what we got over here. Um, I would like more. I'd like more white, a lot meat. So Karen, you had white white meat. Is that what you're talking about? Like chicken on your pizza? That's always good. All right, so that's cooking a little bit like that. We're going to go over to our potato skins here because we haven't touched these yet, and I'm still really curious to try these. So I'm going to switch over to our prep cam where we're going to kind of put these up. All right. We're just going to take a little bit of our olive oil. Kind of spring. I remember I haven't made these before, so but the concept's pretty simple. So I always like to try and add a little something on stream that I haven't made before just to learn, do something different. I might have put a little too much olive oil on there. Can you really put too much olive oil? I don't know. Kind of mix it around. Something I probably should have also noted is, but I wanted to check our oil amount, is when you are going to mix it up, you should just put all your seasonings in at the same time before you mix it. That way you only have to mix it one time instead of a bunch of time. So there's a little bit of black pepper. I, uh, I like a lot of black pepper. That's just me. A little bit of garlic powder. Just a tad bit. Not a whole lot. That might have came out a little faster than I wanted to. And salt. Get them salt shakers out, boys. A little bit of sprinkle of salt on top of there. Mm. And just for fun, I'm going to add a little bit of Romano Parmesan cheese on there. Just, just because I like it. Okay. So now that we got that, I need to find a little... This thing used to have a little mini pan that... Oh, you know what? Will this fit? I wonder if this will fit. Oh, just slightly too big. I don't know if I have a little pan. Usually I do bagels and stuff in here, so I don't know if I have a little pan. 
to put those in. I'm trying to brainstorm real quick what I have and what I can use. And let's see. Clang, bang, smash, stuff everywhere. Uh, let's see. This panel is probably a little too big, too. Unless, oh, let's try this. If we pull that out, that will allow that to sit perfectly on there. Perfect. We got it. We're good. Okay. So we're going to let that heat up. We got our potatoes. Garlic is amazing. Yes, Joe Life. Garlic is absolutely amazing. You know what else we could probably do with this? Take a little bit of garlic from our minced garlic. Maybe just like a finger's worth, right? Just kind of splat it on top of there. It's just just for fun. All right. I'm going to kind of mix that up. Mmm! So good! Clip that out through there. So, normally you'd probably want to do this on a baking sheet, layer this out a little more. You might have a little too much there. I'm going to pull some of this off just because I can't spread it out as much as I want to. Because, again, I don't have the proper... Hey, your buddy slobbering his water there. That's sexy, huh? Um, because I don't have the right thing to put in there. So, yeah, we'll just kind of do a little partial layer there. Because when you're doing chips stuff like this, you want to uh, you want to keep it spread out. If you have them stacked together, they're going to soak water together, and they're just going to get warm and mushy. They're not going to, like, fry and chip like you want. <coughs> and, uh, oh, I can smell that cooking so good over there. So let's switch to our stove cup, top cam. All right. This was our raw chicken piece. And our chicken is still towards the raw end, so we're going to use this one last time in here. We're going to flip all our chicken over, because whatever was on top might not have gotten the best of cooking. Flip all that over. You don't want to taste test your stuff just yet, because, again, it's still the raw chicken. So we'll let it cook a while. Eventually here we'll get a good taste test, and we'll get an idea of what we're missing, what we have too much of, what we need to add. So while that's our raw chicken piece, we have a fresh one here. We're going to check our potatoes. One way I check them, when you're in the kitchen, you're super fast, and you just kind of grab one like this and throw it in your mouth real quick and burn the hell out of your mouth. Another way to do the fork test. Push your fork in. Mm hmm Mm. Now, something with the salt and the boiling of the water to note. When you are making a potato salad, or and even mashed potatoes in this sense, when you put the salt in first, the potatoes will absorb the salt and soak the salt in. So that piece of potato that I just ate there... When you eat the potato, even on the inside in the middle of it, it's salty. It, it has flavor um, because it spent this whole time just soaking all of that inside of itself. If you add the salt in at the end, um, it doesn't have as much time to soak in. If you're making mashed potatoes, I guess that doesn't really matter too much because you're going to mash them and season them anyways. But if you're making a potato salad, seasoning your water is very important. Another thing you can also do, and I didn't do it this time, but I do it in... Um, um, big kitchens um, for soups and stuff. You can also add chicken broth to your potatoes that are boiling. So if you're making a potato salad of any form, add chicken stock, add different um, seasonings to your water that your potato is boiling because it's going to soak and absorb all of that. And then when you drain it all and refrigerate it and go and make your potato salad, when you bite into the potato, instead of just tasting your mayonnaise or whatever your main base on the outside is and all your seasoning, when you bite into the potato, you're going to get flavor burst inside as well. And it's just going to make your potato salad that much better than Nancy's on the table next to you and you get to be that much cooler at the party. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, I don't know who Nancy is, so if there's somebody Nancy, I'm sorry. But you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, th th this whole time boiling the potato is very key in getting that main flavor in there. Um, so yeah, always always remember that and think about that. So our little mini toaster is nice and hot. I'm going to throw this little pan of potatoes we got in here. Sorry I don't have a camera for this one yet. 
thought about getting another camera eventually at some point. So we're going to put that in there. I don't know what time it is. Let's, let's do a little time thing. So if it's at 8.01 on the dot, um, let's see how it goes for about five minutes in there. We got another one. We'll do more. Our potatoes are just about done. Also, when you do your potatoes, when you drain them, you're going to want to, um, you don't want to rinse them. You just want to drain them out. Rinsing them is, all, is bad. Also, you're going to want to take this leftover flour here. I know I have a lot here. Got to get better at measurement. And flour isn't that expensive, so it's not that big of a deal. In kitchens, if you're making a whole bunch, you would use this flour throughout. Um, since I'm not going to make anything more with it, and it's been used with raw chicken, you don't want to save it by any means. You want to throw it out. You don't want to put it in your refrigerator. I guess if you're going to make it tomorrow and more chicken, I guess you can, as long as you know and understand that's what you're doing. But you don't want to risk salmonella by any means. And so, yeah, it's a little bit of a waste. It's a safety hazard, and it's a it's a mean getting better at measuring. But at the same time, I'm trying to flour chicken like that. I mean, you kind of use a decent amount of flour. So everything is looking good over here. Let's uh. Let's cut into one of these pieces and see how we taste. I'm going to move these because that was all raw chicken. I want to clean that up, actually. I have a sponge here. I have a sponge here. So, if you have a meat thermometer, great. I'm going to work on getting a nice digital meat thermometer, one that will display a nice, accurate reading so I can show you guys um, temperatures of things. Uh, I don't want to get... I, I do have a junky one around here but you won't be able to see very well. And I'll show you a way to do it when you don't have one. So, as with anything, you just take your knife and kind of cut into your chicken while it's in the pan there and just kind of give it a check. Make sure it's cooked all the way through. Uh, a key element to doing this is, see how this piece is nice and thin? This piece is a little bit thicker. You want to check your thickest piece. You don't want to check your thinnest piece for obvious reasons, but just in case, the thickest piece may not be cooked all the way through, whereas the thinnest piece obviously could be. And just like I pretty much imagined, everything is pretty well cooked. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to try a little piece of our chicken, I'm going to try a little piece of our sauce. I'm going to cut a piece off here without spilling the pan everywhere. That'll be fun, huh? Spill it. Grab a spoon. Okay. Mm. Mm. Chicken tastes wonderful. The gravy is coming along so nice. As it continues to cook down and reduce and thicken. Oh my god. The more solids hitting it. You guys, you pretty much nailed it just right. I mean, mm, it was kind of. I'm going to turn this down and just let it kind of slow simmer. Kind of like a slow cooker. Hope the chicken continue to tender out and thaw out. Not thaw, but continue to tender out. As you see, I'm kind of doing a little mixing. As you saw, I put those two big chunks of butter in there. I didn't really mix them in. And consequently, you can see the oil trails through, like where the butter is kind of melting. So what I'm doing here is just kind of mixing the butter in with the gravy. A little bit. Probably add some more chicken stock just because we have a nice amount of chicken here and we have the mashed potatoes. Our mashed potatoes now are, should be officially done. Oh yeah. Stick it right through. They're soft. Turn the water off. Oh, let's check these things. It's been what, five minutes, right? Yep. Ooh, that's good. Okay. See how we're looking here. Oh man, it's totally working too. So good. Some people are probably laughing at me because they know it worked, and as I assumed it would. But we're gonna let it go for like probably two more minutes. It's not quite done, but it's darn close. While we're doing that, I want to grab this thing. 
that's my uh, strainer and hmm, I'm not sure how I want to hold that so I'm just going to hold the top corner grab our potatoes I don't really have camera over the sink for this but I'm going to drain them real quick drop them, set them in there in the strainer. One thing you want to do with potatoes after this, once you drain them out, you don't want to rinse them. You want to take a piece of paper towel. You want to set it over top of your potatoes and let them steam out. It'll help make them a little more fluffier um, when you go to do your mashed potatoes. Something else I didn't look into first was my potato masher. Oh, here it is. We don't have to spend 20 minutes looking for it, guys. All right. Good deal. We're getting a little bit more organized here each time, guys. This is this is good. Kush King 138. Are you cooking <laughs> No. No. This is not Breaking Bad Part 2. Uh, we do not condone that. No. We are, we are making chicken marsala and mashed potatoes. This chicken is just smelling and looking so good, guys. Um, oh, that's what I needed to do. I knew there was something else I needed to chop up. Got a couple of little fun things here. Whoa! That's the, uh, some cheese. <laughs> All right. That should be good. So our chicken is essentially done. We're just letting the gravy kind of cook itself in. Um, if you need to thicken the gravy up a little bit, which we might do here in a little bit, um, we can add... Oh, our chips. Mmm, look at that, guys. Look at that. So this wasn't the best piece of equipment to use for this, but it worked. Um plate here when these cool down. Uh oh, I dropped one in there. That's okay. Not a bad thing. Oh man, it smells so good. I love roasted red potatoes too. So if you're a person who likes to peel their potatoes, one thing you should totally do is save all your peels. Olive oil, garlic powders, and things of that nature. And you end up with a beautiful piece like that. Oh my god, look at that. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm going to have to stop stream so I can sit down and eat this because this is amazing. <laughs> breaking good in here. <laughs> yeah. Breaking out some good food. Oh my god, I can't stop eating these. I'm going to dump the rest of these in this pan. I wasn't going to do it, but that was really good. We were really good. So, I'm going to put the remainder in the pan and bake those off for a couple more minutes in that little toaster we got there. And again, remember I used um, red skin potatoes. I prefer red potatoes over other ones, but it really doesn't matter how you do this, but yeah. Oh, that was so good. Okay. Mashed potatoes. From our chips. Mm. So good, guys. Oh, my God. And chips are amazing. What you can also do with that is, if you do like these chips, and something I might just do, and I might add that to Wednesday's stream, actually. That would be a great thing to add. Um, you can take your shaver and do the whole potato. You know, you don't have to just do the skins and make your own potato chips. I mean, all it is is just thinly sliced potatoes. Um... So back over to here, I have these green onions, chives, whatever you'd like to call them. And we're going to chop these up after I clean my knife off real good. The reason it's important to clean your knife off really good at this part because these chives aren't going to be cooked. 
Japanese cat trousers are going straight into our mashed potatoes. All right. So if you're just joining us here, guys, today, tonight, if you're just joining us, we're making chicken marsala. We just got most chicken cooking down right now. Uh, we're about to get into our mashed potatoes. Um, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that follow button. Really appreciate it. We're also on Facebook and YouTube. <clears throat> All right. So with these, we're going to use that method of the tip down. I'm just going to chop them up. Let's do a couple at a time. We might not need all of them. So I like to use the whole thing because I like the dark greens. I like the light greens. Why do you I have the olive oil? Pam, could I use that to try the potatoes in? You know, I don't see. I I don't see why not because it's it's basically olive oil. Um, I wouldn't like use an excess amount like if you had a container bottle of it um but yeah i would totally imagine if you took a little pan um took, took your baking sheet or whatever and sprayed the bottom with a good layer of that and then laid your chit then laid your potatoes out use a potato peeler or, you know carrot peeler scrape a bunch out and then lay it out and put your seasonings over top and then spray the olive oil um pan spray over top and and then bake it at 450 or put it on broil or whatever but yeah you want to bake it high at like 450 and as you saw it's only about only takes about eight minutes if you go to 10 minutes you might be pushing it hard to say um but yeah I, and it's it's just compressed olive oil that sprays out so i don't see why pam olive oil wouldn't wouldn't work um if you're looking at those chips idea thinking man i might have that in my kitchen right now i could totally make that and dip it in some ranch it sounds amazing you totally can and the cool part about it is you're frying it in olive oil and you're using garlic and, and seasonings and if you lay low on the salts uh, it's healthy i mean health people always love olive oil and it's always good to use and so it's like potato chips that aren't used in big heavy fatty oils you know and you can make them any flavor you want Another thing you can do is if you go to the store and buy like a ranch seasoning packet flavoring to make your own ranch, um, use the seasoning packet and just kind of sprinkle a little bit over top of it too. And you can make basically your own cooler ranch Doritos, except you make your own cooler, you know, your own ranch potato chips, you know. I mean, that's essentially all it is. So, I mean, you, you can try all kind of different stuff out like that make your own chips. That's something that's simple, easy. And you don't even have to use vegetable oil. If you're like, oh, man, I don't have vegetable oil. I mean, you can use uh, or olive oil. Um, you can use vegetable oil in place of olive oil. It's not as healthy and it's not as flavorful, but you can do that. Mm, that smells so good. Guys, mm, such a good flavor. How long would you recommend in the oven and what temp for those? Um... I don't know how long the delay is there, YU, but um, yeah, the, the, I would recommend the temperature at 450 degrees on your oven, and I would recommend, as you see, uh, as we did here, for about 8 minutes. I would say if you push it to 10 minutes, you're going to be right at the verge of maybe burning, or you're going to be right at the ver verge of perfectly crispy. So I would say put them in the oven and let them go for a solid 8 minutes, 7 to 8, I would say 8. And after eight minutes, check on them. And if you want them to go a little longer, um, let them go at like three-minute intervals. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say five-minute intervals because you can end up... Five minutes is a lot longer than you think sometimes in cooking. So maybe I wouldn't recommend five, but check every three after that uh, to the crispness that you like. And also remember to have it spaced out a lot. You know, um, as you saw there, don't don't have them stack on each other too much. Otherwise, they won't crisp as much. I have a feeling YU is going to go make that here in the... Either right now or after the stream. But it sounds like he's going to go right now and make that. Because I recommend you do it. It's freaking fantastic. So let's try this gravy now. Oh my god. Guys, it's so good. Mm. So good. Could have used some more pepper. Yeah, I love pepper. So good. Okay. Uh, I don't have it over. Nice things. Yeah, no problem. Why? Um. Yeah, anytime you guys want any recipe ideas, tips, tricks, anything like that, feel free to ask. I'm always more than welcome to 
share the secret of cooking. God, those chips are so good. I highly recommend everybody do that and make those chips. Because that's just... Mm. These ones are almost done. I don't think I checked the time on these ones when we put them in. I wanted to time that for why you there. That's right. Maybe we'll maybe we'll make a side batch when we do some Q and A later. Um, it's kind of something I was thinking of. I missed the comment from Y earlier last week, but at the end of stream, uh, we'll sit down and do a little Q and A section. Um, not that we can't do that throughout, but you know, at the end, we'll, um, if you have any questions about any kind of culinary stuff, what we made tonight, anything in general, what you might be making tomorrow, maybe you have a Maybe you have an office party this weekend and you want to, it's a potluck and you want to bring something, might have a question about something, feel free to ask. We like to talk about food. Our potatoes are ready. We're going to come back to our prep cam. As our chicken's cooking, oh, so nice over there. And let's get our knife out of the way. Ooh, olive oil down. All right. So, take our potatoes and we dump them into our mixing bowl. I need to get a bigger bowl for this. Actually, you know what? As opposed to a mixing bowl, I'm just going to put them back into this pot. After I drain the water, you always want to get as much water out as possible. So let me drain that water out. Yeah, that's a sexy looking pan. Pot too, huh? Um, all that good Teflon tear up. Yeah. We'll get better stuff. So, got our potatoes. Got our green onions. Um, I love Parmesan Romano cheese in it. Um, any kind of Romano, it's just the greatest ever. So I put a whole bunch in there, a nice whole bunch. Um, it's a little pricier, but oh, oh, so worth it. <clears throat> Probably going to use most of all of this container bottle. Um, I have some heavy whipping cream here. Um, you can use milk is just fine. The only reason I have the heavy whipping cream is from um, last week when we made a um, oven roasted tomato soup. I had a I had gotten one extra container of whipping cream just in case I didn't have enough, which we had plenty of. Um, so this will be a good way to use it instead of just some of the milk. I got a pint's worth here. You don't need a whole lot. Another thing you probably want to do, and I kind of wanted to do, and I've gone too far and don't care anymore anyways, you can... Excuse me, you can um, you can take your milk and either put it in the microwave or put it in a pan and kind of heat it up and get it warm. That way it doesn't cool your potatoes down. Um, sometimes that can happen. I use about half of that, so about half a pint. I'm going to throw a lot of black pepper in there. I take the lid off to put my black pepper because I love black pepper. And then some more garlic powder. And let's mash it up. Oh, butter. Big key. Butter is always important. Again, you want to heat your butter up, and we actually will because otherwise the butter just takes forever to melt and it just doesn't melt right. So, we're going to take a small chunk of butter right here. Cut off that chunk. I'm going to throw it on a plate. Throw it in my nuker real quick. Chef Mike. Chef Mike is a big factor in every kitchen. Um, if you don't know Chef Mike, he comes in multiple watts. Usually around 1100 to 1500. He's a fantastic chef. Every... Gourmet Kitchen uses Chef Mike for something in their recipe or for their kitchen, whether you like it or not. It only takes like, put for what, 30 seconds, try that out. So while that's doing that, we'll kind of mix this up. Also with russets, I guess russets, uh, russet potatoes mash a little easier than these ones do. Again, I don't care. I really love roasted, um, or not roasted, but red tomatoes. We might have added a little bit. No, mashing up good. Probably could have used a little less milk, but it's okay because I like milk in it, or the heavy cream in it. 
Ooh, chicken's looking good. Give it a little move around. The sauce is starting to thicken up. Now, something to pay attention to when you are making this at your home. As you are reducing your liquids, your sauce will get thicker. As your sauce gets thicker, the chance and opportunity to burn at the bottom of the pan increases. So as that increases, make sure you are mixing it and stirring it and all of that stuff. All right. Didn't quite all melt. Close enough. Okay, now let's give it a little taste test. First, I'm going to taste test a couple more of these uh, potato chips. Okay. Oh, man. If you're just joining us, these potato chips are on a different level. They're just so fantastic. Okay, I'm going to taste our gravy out here. Sauce is coming out really good. I call it gravy. It's the sauce. Let's see how their mashed potatoes are tasting. Mm. So good that Romano. Something else you can do since you're adding the cream in. We didn't know. And you don't have to. They have great flavor. You can add a little chicken broth in there as you can. Something else you might notice. I actually had a can of liquid chicken broth today, as opposed to using a powder or a jar and spooning it in like I like to do for soups. As I just said, I like to do that for soups. For um for quick sauces like this and whatnot, having a can or container of it already ready is perfect because you're just putting one away. Ooh, excuse me. Oh, those potatoes should be totally done. I can smell them. Ooh, they might have gotten close. We might have burned these ones. But maybe not. We're right on the cusp. Let's grab our plate. Checking the time. Almost at like, I didn't really time these, but it's definitely over 10 minutes. But as you see, they're not quite burnt. Just that one got burnt, which is okay. It's an undersized, probably not. It'll taste just fine. Something you'll notice it'll smell a little like popcorn because popcorn basically smells like butter and oil cooking. And that's exactly what this is. And oh my god, guys, these chips are amazing. The mashed potatoes are fantastic. We're spot on. Let me get these out of the way. I'm a nice big bowl for them. A spoon for them here somewhere too. I just put away earlier today. Um, right here. Just a big old bowl of heaven, really. Buddy. Dog's over there licking himself. It's always attractive. All right. These mashed potatoes just came out fantastic, guys. Good to the last drop. Taste that Romano in there. Oh, God, I love Romano so much. It's like my favorite cheese in the world. It's Romano. There's a dish called Chicken Romano. I use a white wine. I actually have a white wine. And, um... Maybe we'll do that next week if anybody has any ideas. I do not have anything planned for next week, so if there's anything anybody would like to see or know, um, we're going to have to come up with that next week. Chicken Romano does sound good. or um, We just did a chicken. I'd like to do something else next week. Maybe we'll do a, a meatloaf. Or, meatloaf sounds good. or um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Thomas, what do you think? What do you think we should make? Thomas, anything good? 
I'm gonna have to look up that Rasta chicken you were talking about. Tash, you know anything? Anything you like? Mm. Okay. So that is done. I'm gonna pull this off. Where's my placement? Oh yeah, right here. So I'm gonna pull this. Set that right there. We're gonna make our dish. I'm gonna switch our prep cam better. Okay. With that pen there, mashed potatoes here. We're gonna go for the plating. See if we can make an all-star plating here and make it look super nice. Um. Oh, I should. Oh, I did. Yeah, perfect. So I saved some of these chives. Um. I'm just gonna chop a couple of them up. Okay. I have, yeah, the spoon we had used. So what we're going to do for the plating here, put a nice scoop of mashed potatoes. I have a really big oversized plate so I can make sure I do it right, but it might not look as good because we might do it wrong as it's too big of a plate, but that's okay. So a spoonful of mashed potatoes. It would be really cool if I had, but I don't. Oh, yes I do something you can do for a little topper on these mashed potatoes for fun. A um, little bit of shredded cheese to sprinkle over top of the mashed potatoes. We have the Romano powder inside and you don't you can mix shred it inside too but you can leave it on the outside and make a garnish out of it. You know? And then, oh excuse me, getting the burps from eating the food. I'm a burpy person. Alright. Then we got this over here, we got our tongs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay a piece like that. And grab this beautiful piece. And another nice beautiful piece. Look at that. And then what we'll do is we'll use our same spoon here since we're just making the one fancy looking plate. We're gonna get a nice scoop here of the mushrooms. I spoon that over top, a little bit of the gravy. Oh, I could have made a garlic toast too, huh? And then take those little chives that we chopped up, sprinkle a couple over top, take some more of that Parmesan. You can sprinkle that over top. And that, ladies and gents, dudes and dudettes, is a chicken marsala with a mashed potatoes just fantastically delicious. I'm going to pull out my camera here and get us a little camera shot of this for our page because that just looks so beautiful and good. Pull that back out of the way. I got another short stream idea for you. Nachos. Yeah, nachos. Um, so, but see, you don't know how I make nachos, man. Maybe nachos, in my mind, isn't a short stream. Maybe we get really fancy and creative with nachos, and we just go overboard, and it ends up becoming a two-and-a-half-hour stream. Because <laughs> um, you can do all kind of fun, crazy stuff with nachos. Uh, one of those fun, crazy things being is making your own homemade chili to go on top of those nachos. Um, another thing with those nachos is getting your own tortillas and hand-cutting them and frying your own chips to make your own tortilla chips. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a lot involved with nachos. But, yeah, I like the idea. But something I wanted to go over to... We've got a bunch of people watching here. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys about and talk about was um, on Wednesdays, what do you think about a $10 stream? So on Wednesdays, uh, we will, because it, it'll still be kind of a short stream. Uh, um, I don't mind if it's a longer stream, but I was just coming up with ideas. I really, excuse me, I really, I don't know. I just coming up with ideas, things to do. So let's make up another plate because that was just a pretty looking plate. Um, so one of the ideas was on Wednesdays we're going to do a $10 deal. So every Wednesday we'll make a dish for under 
So a dish that you can make yourself at your local Walmart or whatever using main ingredients such as top ramen, um, rice, uh, potatoes, um, pastas, pasta bakes. I mean, you can make really fantastic baked zitis and things like that for like eight dollars. I mean, you can do, you can make really fantastic stuff, you know. Um, and so. I know a lot of people, times are tough. People don't have a whole lot of money, myself included. So the idea of um, like a $10 stream, something that you can easily whip up in your kitchen um, and take just basic cheap ingredients that are normally looked at as not that great and make something wonderful with it, you know? Um, I don't know, that was kind of an idea I was kicking around. Um, if you guys want to comment what you guys think, um, looks like there's a few of you out there, so, uh, that was just something that I was kind of, th I might have dumped a whole lot of gravy on that one that kind of flooded that, you know, so you're going for presentations. Not the best of the best, but, you know. So, I don't know, what do you guys think if we do, uh, or we can just stay with short streams, you know, we can just keep it as, like, here's something fun and quick, here's a half hour, 45 minutes, hour video, something quick bang bang and we're off stream or do you want something like maybe about the same time could go on longer hard to say you want something like where we sit down and make something for under ten dollars and because I, I wrote down some ideas plus stuff that I've made in the past and um, you can make a lot of really good food for ten bucks let me tell you um man those chips are really good I can't get enough of eating those so good so good Pull my chair out here. I'm going to sit down and try out some of our delicious gourmet. Read a little Q&A. That's part of it to start off, what you guys might think. Um, Joe's life, you, you like it either way. That's cool, man. Yeah. Like I said, I really don't have a plan one way or the other. I, you know, maybe we can change that again later. I was just thinking for um, cash purposes on my end. And on the viewer end we can have a cheap Wednesday of food and it'll be really fun you know it's ideas that I've used in the past and things and ideas will come up with um, you can kinda show a nice little trickery with friends and stuff with you know you can go up to you know you can have some people over and everybody pitch in like five bucks of that and you just come, come out with some gourmet meals like how did you do that? I don't know I was watching this dude stream and came up with some fantastic ideas. I'm gonna try some of this out because it just looks oh so good. So mm-hmm. Super good. But that's about all we got for today. So we'll sit here with some Q and A and kinda talk with you guys for a moment if you want and hang out. Otherwise, I'll go offline here soon. I'm going to uh, stop recording for...